breaking news that the Secret Service has been briefed on by intelligence in the United States, uh, that the Iranians have an ongoing plot. Uh, we know they've called on a fatwa, but they have an ongoing plot uh, to assassinate President Trump and that his security has been increased. And that increased uh, security was in place in Pennsylvania and yet was not able to stop that 20-year-old from climbing on a building 100 and uh, so yards away and taking what could have been a kill shot on the former president of the United States. So, I mean, Logan, a lot of confusion here, too, about how with uh, that ir increased Iranian threat, they weren't uh, putting in place a bigger perimeter. And you're starting to see the Secret Service like trying to blame President Trump and the Trump campaign to say, well, we don't like that they do so many big events. Which is just you know, par for the course. This is what politics is. You go and you do these big events. But it is unfortunate that we're seeing these reports coming in. Obviously, we knew after uh, this has been an ongoing threat from Iran after the uh, uh, taking out of Soleimani. That is something that we've kind of known was always active, uh, but maybe not active to the point where we knew that there were ongoing plans uh, for assassinations. But we have a of a no longer sitting president right now. I'm deeply concerned about this. President Trump is a threat to the power elite in Washington and the deep state. I believe that the threat posture against him will only likely increase because he's not willing to be controlled by any of them. I am deeply concerned. The longer that this woman stays as the director of the Secret Service, I don't have confidence I don't have confidence that she can actually secure President Trump or anyone that the Secret Service is charged to secure. You can surround him with more bodies, but if the leadership is not there in a set, truly assessing the threat and creating the conditions and setting the policies for Secret Service agents to do what they have been trained to do, I really fear for President Trump's safety. Those conversations about the investigations are going to be occurring right now as, as we it seems like there was definitely a failure to protect the president, President Trump, uh, in that situation. I, I think that that's very clear. I, I don't even think this is a, a question right now. It's now how did it happen and what will it look like going forward? We know that they are up security. They are building. But look, it's it's tough. You're at, you're at outdoor events. You have a lot of people who are very uh, upset with you. You have a lot of people who support you. You have a lot of security issues. It is it is maybe harder than it seems. But this was a situation where it definitely seems like a failure. Uh, a big failure from the Secret Service and from uh, the police force there, unfortunately. You know, do I think anyone went into this intentionally trying to do this, uh, intentionally trying to be a, you know, not protect? No, I don't think that's the case. But I think sometimes we get comfortable. You forget that this can happen in your life. Uh, Gwen is someone who is as you know, close to 40. Uh, the only time that something like this happened was Reagan and I was very little or not even born yet. Uh, so it, it's easy to say, it, you know, that... Um, it's easy to forget that this kind of moment can still occur. And I think this should be a big wake-up call. I think also we will learn a lot more on Monday because House Oversight Committee will have the Director of Secret Service as well as other officials testifying before them. But right now there are two competing narratives coming out of the Secret Service. One is that we're hearing there was a, a known from intelligence threat against President Trump of an Iranian plot to assassinate him. And so we're being told that they were, had boosted security for the former president. But on the other hand, you're also hearing that uh, it wasn't the same team that he normally has because they've been working so much and they try to say he's doing too many events. So we're taxed. Our resources are taxed and that we weren't able to fully uh, protect and have as many resources because there was also the first lady was in Philadelphia, so in the same state. So you're hearing two competing narratives from the same agency that, one, we've been protecting him more because we knew there was a threat, and then also our resources were strained. That, hopefully, we'll find out on Monday, but I agree with Gwen. Right now, there's not a big show of confidence from this administration that whether the FBI investigating it, whether it's the Secret Service ongoing, it, it's concerning. Look, it's even the sad time where, of course, now RFK Jr. gets Secret Service protection. It had to be after an assassination attempt on the, on the former president of the United States. You know, couldn't just approve that, couldn't just get that going. For someone who was polling with significant percentage, drawing big crowds someone whose family, uh, his father and his uncle, 
two of the most famous political assassinations of all time. But of course, he doesn't get that until it's honestly kind of too late. Sure, I'm sure he's very happy, very pleased to have Secret Service protection. Don't get me wrong in that. But it is a sad situation where it had to come to this for us to say, no, we're going to protect even our political rivals. Tulsi, your thoughts are first on the pick of J.D. Vance, the first millennial uh, to be chosen uh, for uh, a, a executive branch position uh, to serve as vice president. And I wanted to get your thoughts on the pick of J.D. Vance. I think it was a good pick from President Trump. And that that initial thought, I, I endorsed J.D. Vance when he ran for the Senate in 2022. And and uh, he has shown courage through his short time in the U.S. Senate. The fact that headline, and I was literally just scrolling through headlines before you uh, before we joined each other on this call. Uh, uh, here's one from Politico magazine, that, quote, scared to death, GOP security hawks slam Vance selection. The fact that that J.D. Vance's selection as Trump's running mate uh, is is terrifying the military industrial complex and the warmongers in Washington further affirms why he's the right choice. First of all, because he's looking out for what's best for the country, not what's best for the military industrial complex and those who are profiting off of us being in a constant state of war. Second of all, he's somebody that President Trump knows will have his back. And this is one of the challenges that President Trump had in his last administration was, you know, he had people around him who may have said yes to his face, when he said, hey, here's what I want to do, and I'll, I'll use as an example, when he said, we need to get out of Syria now, there were people around him, both those who he appointed, as well as those who wear our country's uniform, who were intentionally slow rolling and trying to do the exact opposite of what Trump directed them to do. Uh, this this is so, so deeply offensive and, and goes directly in the face of our democratic process where unelected people are trying to direct the policy of our country that is exactly opposed to the policy that any elected, that this elected president uh, had laid out. So again, I think J.D. Vance is, is a great choice. I look forward to doing all I can to help President Trump and J.D. Vance get elected and bring back uh, this leadership to the White House that actually respects the Constitution and puts the well-being of the American people and our country first. I think a lot of people feel like they can relate to his story. Great story. Even if you disagree with his issues, the guy's got a heck of a backstory. So take a look at that. Be a part of it. I'm going to watch tonight with great interest because I'm very interested in what he has to say. Uh, and hey, maybe he can be the savior to the millennial uh, uh, the millennial generation. As we've been thrown around quite a bit, maybe we need someone who can uh, stick up and say, hey, you know, we're not so bad after all. 